Excellency, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate this. To kick things off right off the bat with current affairs, in February, we've been reading a lot about vaccine diplomacy, India sending the AstraZeneca to Mexico. What can you tell us about reception on the ground and what happened during those? Well, you know, Mexico purchased from the Serum Institute based in Pune the, uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine that is being made there called COVID Shield. Right. Uh, we bought a total of uh, is two million, uh, a little bit more than two million doses, and the first uh, shipment was going to be in February, eight hundred seventy thousand, and this was received in Mexico on February fourteenth, and uh, it was the first. Uh, the first large uh, shipment of vaccines that arrived in Mexico that were ready to be uh, to be used, because we have also received other other uh, other vaccines, but uh, you know some of them are are being uh, bottled in Mexico, or, or or for example, we're working with Argentina also to produce some of the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine in Mexico, and that is still being done, so it's not ready for application. Uh, since then, or, or before and since, we have also purchased the, uh, the Russian vaccine, the uh, uh, Sputnik, and two of the Chinese vaccines, uh, Pfizer also, but there was a little uh, uh, gap there because Pfizer at one point stopped uh, shipments, not only to Mexico, but worldwide. And, uh, and of course, we're also working with this multilateral uh, entity, COVAX, to get some of the vaccines uh, also in, in that regard. But obviously, we're very, uh, very pleased and very grateful to the uh, to the Indian authorities because, as you know, even though this is a commercial agreement with the Serum Institute to purchase the vaccines, it has to be the Indian government who has the final uh, authority to allow the shipment to leave India to uh, to travel to the different destinations that that has been going uh, to. Uh, as you well know, India has been sending uh, many vaccines as, uh, as donations to many countries. Uh, and in other cases, like in, in our case, it's, uh, it's been uh, you know, vaccines that we have uh, purchased, that, that were bought at uh, the commercial price. And, uh, and we're still waiting uh, for, the, uh, for the second shipment of the, the remaining two million, uh, 100,000, something like that. Uh, of the vaccines, uh, which may not come in March as was originally planned, but also actually in April, uh, the um, the CEO of Serum Institute has told us that they've had a, a problem in, the, in satisfying the, the demand, precisely because you know they're, they're satisfying the internal, the domestic demand here in India, the demand that the government of India has had in terms of uh, donating some vaccines in, in its. Uh, policy of vaccine diplomacy, and, uh, and thirdly, of course, the commercial uh, engagements that it, that it has. So we're, that's the stage where we are right now. The yeah, Excellency, you brought up India and China within this context, and over some time, quietly, you will note that India and China have an expanding their footprint somewhere mm -hmm. in the region. What could you tell us about the engagement on both fronts, and what do you expect in the next five to ten years? Well, we certainly what we're looking for is for India to uh, expand uh, its footprint in Latin America, uh, not only in Mexico but in Latin America. With Mexico, things are going fairly well. We, you know, we have become in the past few years uh, India's uh, major trading, the first trading partner in Latin America, the second in the Americas, only after the United States, and India has become one of its our top ten uh, trading partners in the world. So obviously, you know, we have uh, an intense uh, presence also, uh, which can be uh, uh, exemplified by the fact that there's over, you know, close to 80 Indian businesses that are set up in, uh, in, uh, in Mexico, and about 200 which indirectly are doing business with Mexico. So that's, you know, quite a significant footprint. You know, one can say it's never enough, and we're obviously trying to expand this, the presence of India uh, in Mexico. We're very happy, and I think that the, the, the Indian businesses that are in Mexico, which range on you know, a you know, broad uh, uh, rainbow of, of products, uh, 
you know, and they're, and they're doing well. Some of them are expanding. Some of them are, you know, uh, uh, are looking, uh, you know, to uh, to solidify their, their position in the Mexican market. But obviously, we're also interested in, in India having a larger footprint in the region. As you probably know, this past January, India announced that it was opening two additional embassies in the, in the region, in the Dominican Republic and in Paraguay. And that's important. I think that, uh, you know, sometimes when, when I see some of the events that are taking place here in India uh, of, of different sorts, you know, many times the, uh, there's a black hole in the, in the agenda, which is Latin America. Right. So, you know, almost never exists. Uh, last year, for example, in the Ricina Dialogue, there was one guest from Latin America, which was a vice minister of foreign affairs from Mexico. We were very happy about that. Uh, but we talked with the organizers and we thought, you have to, you know, if you're going to talk about the world and uh, world trends and, you know, uh, what's happening in terms of, you know, climate change or financial uh, trends, uh, development issues, etc. You cannot you know, do this without uh, putting Latin America in the picture. So obviously, you know, I think that not only myself, but all of the, the ambassadors from Latin America are pushing more and more to have uh, uh, not only the government of India, but different institutions uh, of NGOs, think tanks, etc., to consider, you know, uh, having more of a presence with Latin America, studying more about Latin America, learning more about Latin America, and uh, so we see the you know the possibility of, of India uh, as having a, a larger footprint in the region as a as a positive de development. But coming back to your question, this is not necessarily something as a as a counterbalance to the Indian pre to the Chinese presence in the region, which of course has been uh, considerable, especially in in South Central and South America, not so much in Mexico. And uh, I think that uh, there is a value in and of itself for India uh, to have uh, a you know, closer relationship with all of us, and we're all very eager to uh, to have a. Uh, a, a larger and more uh, productive and varied relationship with India. So hopefully, in the future, as we you know move ahead, and as also as India, I think you know uh, you know assumes more of an active role in international politics, that uh, Latin America will be part of this of the overall strategy.